Yo, what's up, True Seekers? Welcome back. I uh, appreciate you joining me today. I got some really hilarious stuff I want to talk about. And it has to do with the Super Bowl and a certain Audi commercial. Now, you've probably heard a lot about the Audi commercial and how much it kind of sucked and how they basically admitted that the pay gap that they were pushing is an economic myth, using their own company as an example. But I haven't heard a spin. The, the thing that stuck out to me that was obvious is not something I hear talking about a lot. So that's what I want to point out. And that's basically that this video was Audi's apology. This was their atonement video for something they did previously. Because that's where we live in today, where if you step over the line and make the wrong social justice warriors angry, you have to mea culpa. Liberals must examine all the reasons why we keep losing elections. Hmm. Starting with Democrats have gone from the party that protects people to the party that protects feelings. From ask not what your country can do for you to you owe me an apology. <laughs> oh, Obama's climate scam under investigation. I just realized this was up. That's a shocker. We'll come back to that later. If you don't read the Liberty Daily, you should. It's a great website. Uh, let's see here. So one good thing about being sick is probably every year and a half or two years that I've gotten sick since, I don't know, puberty, my voice drops several octaves and I can do a couple things that I cannot do on regular days. One of them is my Morpheus impression from The Matrix. It's not quite ready yet, like by tomorrow it should be solid. But the other one is the movie theater preview voice, which I think the guy who did those primarily for decades died last year. So if you're out there and you're hiring, I'm looking to pick up like 48 hours of side work. You know, just real quick gigs. And because it'll go away soon. The last one is uh, Rex Quando from Napoleon Dynamite. You probably know him from the pants. But uh, if I had Diedrich Bader's voice, oh, man, I'd be whoring it out all over the place and just saying things like, you think anybody thinks I'm a failure because I go to Starla at night? Forget about it. <laughs> no, bow to your sensei. Bow to your sensei. <laughs> I can't, I already, my wife's going to be, uh, she's going to be done with me tomorrow. I can't wait. All right. So we're talking about Audi and how they are committed to equal pay for equal work. And that, uh, what's the other one here? Progress is for everyone. Of course, of course, liberal tropes. We love it. Oh, they make me feel better just reading them. So I'm not a huge football guy anymore. I was, I mean, I live where the Cardinals live, so we don't have much to get excited about. We're kind of like the Patriots were for about 20 years. Uh, nothing going on there. Yeah, I've never rooted for Tom Brady. Uh, I think the NFL has kind of gone off the cliff. I'm doing some calculations on how much time people waste supporting football, and it's ridiculous. There's no, really no value in it. And I've finally broken the cycle. I'll probably do a video on how I think you should do the same. I don't want to be too preachy like someone who does vegan or CrossFit, but uh, there's, there's something to be said about sending your time down the black hole vortex that is the NFL. And uh, we're seeing a lot less of that recently because people are realizing how jacked up the league is and how big of a waste of time it is. Anyway, that's not what we're here. We're here to talk about the Super Bowl party at my mom's house and the fact that we were late. I don't really care who was going to win, but I have to say for the first time in my life, I'm rooting for Tom Brady because the articles the media wrote about him needing to give penance and have forgiveness for his thought crime of not thinking Donald Trump's a horrible human being. I mean, I'm hearing this and thinking media, do you know why Trump won? Have you figured it out yet? Bill Maher has. You know, in 2016, conservatives won the White House, both houses of Congress, and almost two thirds of governorships and state legislatures. Whereas liberals, on the other hand, caught Steve Martin calling Carrie Fisher beautiful in a tweet and made him take it down. Pay attention. I'm not making that up. That really happened. Here's Steve's offensive tweet. When I was a young man, Carrie Fisher was the most beautiful creature I'd ever seen. She turned out to be witty and bright as well. <gasps> How could you, Steve? <laughs> we thought we knew you, but this? You noted her appearance first, and then that she was witty and bright. You're a monster. <laughs> <laughs> Liberals do this all the time. So the Audi kind of illustrates this purpose. Or Audi kind of illustrates this process and this logic. But before we... I explained my reasoning here. I want to remind you of this craptastic video that they made for the Super Bowl. So here we go. And I'm going to set the stage here. It's a boxcar slash Pinewood Derby race that uh, is obviously ruled by the patriarchy. It's all males and there's one low, lonely female. And it's set in the not too distant future where... All the alpha males are gone and all that's left are beta males who are raising their kids and don't really know what to do. 
they don't have instruction manuals, they don't have any instincts, they don't know what to say, they don't know, they don't know what they're doing. And this is a slice of that. What do I, do I tell my daughter? Oh, what can you tell her? I mean, she lives in a man's world. Do I tell her that her grandpa's worth more than her grandma? It depends on what he's fetching in the black market. That her dad is worth more than They're wasting water. What planet is this on? Her that her dad is worth more than her mom? At this point, uh, that's probably not true. Do I tell her that despite her education, her drive, her skills, her intelligence, she will automatically be valued as less than every man she ever meets? Okay. If I were less lazy, there'd be a record scratch and an air horn right here. Do you see what just happened? This is what progressivism does to your mind. This really creative idea of saying, do I tell her that no matter how smart, intelligent, capable, or skilled she is, she's still going to be less worth less than men, while her intelligence, education, skill, expertise just basically took three guys out of the race, saying that she's going to win the race, but she's still worth less than all the guys that she just tricked into losing the race and crashing and burning. Like, do you see how insincere and convoluted this message is? It's hilarious. This is what liberalism does to your brain. What he should tell her is that those things actually determine your value in a free market economy, that all those skills and characteristics combined, depending on your application and your aptitude in utilizing them, will determine your value, your ultimate income, uh, outcome, and your financial standing in life. Assuming you don't get pregnant in high school, which means statistically, your children will be more susceptible to uh, dropping out of school, low grades, and juvenile records, things like that. I mean, it's basically the number one determining factor for poverty and all those other things I mentioned. I mean, you could tell her that, but you won't. Or maybe I'll be able to tell her something different. So it's like Sprite commercials where you don't really know what they're selling till the very end, which I kind of dislike. Um, but if they told you what it was, you'd probably go to the kitchen or go to the bathroom and get some wings. At this point, what he's telling her is if she plays her cards right and tries her best, she might be able to attract the attention of a man who will let her ride an Audi, either in the passenger seat or in the back. We don't actually know. They don't show that part. <laughs> oh, sorry. Progress is for everyone. And progress is now. And, uh, I don't even remember if I've already said that after this video aired, within 20 minutes, they were admitting that at Audi, they debunked this myth. This, I'm old enough to remember after this craptastic commercial ended, and I thought, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. What did I just watch? What just happened here? Isn't this the same company that like three or four years ago got busted and got called misogynist and sexist a-holes? And hold on, I got more, I got more. Um, taught that sexual assault is good and promoted the rape culture. I th yeah, that was Audi. That was the company that if you drove a car, it meant you instantly turned into an a-hole. You were an Audi a-hole. I remember this because the commercial was pretty funny. And it actually had a message that the car would help you accomplish something other than just make you feel good about your own uh, moral superiority. So let's take a look back at that ad. Look at you. So dashing. Come on. Nowadays, lots of people go by themselves. No, they don't. Yeah. Hey, son. Have fun tonight. That changes everything. Super good looking nerd from a balanced family that's obviously very well to do. What's the message here? This kid has combustible courage. He's eight cylinders old. Yeah. He's the boss now. He's the patriarch. He's looking for his next victim. It's a massage. Where's she at? Where's Ray Pilcher gonna hit? Oh man. Oh, Dad was a misogynist too. Awesome. Oh, man, that was actually not the Super Bowl version because they didn't show the end of that. So you can imagine the outrage when this ad ran and they said, wait a minute, wait a minute. You're promoting bravery and saying that if a man drives your car, he'll have the courage and the hatefulness to commit sexual assault against women. I mean, they're glorifying sexual assault. They are 
saying sexual assault is good. There's some really good throwaway lines in here, but I don't have to, I don't want to go through all this. Why are conservatives defending Audi's rapey Super Bowl ad? They're promoting rape culture. I mean, look at this. They're saying the young woman receives a kiss and she chose to be at the prom with someone else. Pro-choice. Our hero forcibly turns around and jams his mouth to hers almost before she can identify him. And certainly without permission being sought or given. And this is Audi fueled power. He leaves prom without her, suggesting she still chooses to be at prom with somebody else. Does she smile? Sure. It's a commercial. Okay. We went from the hypothetical message it's sending to now we're back to the commercial. But this woman makes a good point. Oh, I'm sorry. It's not a woman. It's a, uh, it's a beta male who wrote this article, I think. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. Yeah, Joel Mathis. He makes a good point. They did go to the work of making her smile. If you've worked in Hollywood, you know there are millions of dollars and ridiculous numbers of overstaff perfecting each scene to portray that the image that they want. And in this particular one, okay, that smile, that smugness says it. And then there's this. This is a woman who just got sexually assaulted slash raped. And what does her face say? It says. Me like misogyny. Why didn't she go home with them? We don't know for sure. Man, this question is hilarious. Because bravery used to mean something totally different on D-Day than it does now when actors in Hollywood use it. It's what defines us. Bravery wins. <laughs> sexual assault. Takes uh, you can't have sexual assault with a little bit of bravery. Okay, so you can imagine Audi ran a fall, a foul of the social justice narrative. Uh, Lord, I got anything else here I want to share with you? Sociology lens, sexism, and Super Bowl commercials. Oh, uh, this, this is way too deep here. This will put you to sleep. <clears throat> Audi's Super Bowl ad in the cultural of, culture of rape and sexual assault. Folks, this is sexual assault. And while I'm glad both parties involved were fine in this fictional tale, <laughs> like they didn't, nobody ripped a hammy or anything during this commercial filming, the fact remains she didn't give her consent to being kissed. I hate using this argument because I shouldn't have to. But what if this young man were your daughter? This young woman were your daughter or sister or friend? Pardon the guy who's watched enough ridiculous Nicholas Sparks and Drew Barry movies to know the perfect kiss scene is when the man run, runs up to her and forcibly takes her in his arms and plants one another without asking permission. Sorry, I've seen it about a thousand times in every female wet dream that there is, but I'm just going to forget all that because this is social justice warring. In fact, post Super Bowl misogyny watch, mostly calm with one incident of assault. And it wasn't the Bar Raffaele commercial, which did assault my eyes and ears. It was the one he's really pissed off about, the Audi ad. This whole women just need a little force and they'll like it trope is, of course, classic rape culture. All right. I think I've made the point. This was less than five years ago that Audi made this commercial, which actually was sending a message along with the vehicle. It was presenting a lifestyle and a power play and a reason to buy their product. Unlike the new commercial, which basically just panders to culture and to women, especially. I found this one article where this, uh, another beta male right here, Michael Hafford was upset that what the commercial actually does is say, Hey women, you're not as stupid as you think you are. You're not as unaccomplished and incapable as you know, everyone wants you to believe that you are, which is kind of like saying, hey, you're not stupid. You can do things too. I mean, that's soft bigotry of low expectations. He's saying it's the worst message you can send to people is that even though they ever, all the signs point to them being worthless, they're really not. They can do stuff too if they just try and just, uh, I don't know, um, buy an Audi? I, I don't know. I don't get it. But he makes a pretty fair point. So what is this, all this coming to? You know that whole controversy about the name Washington Redskins? They did a survey. Nine out of 10 actual Indians don't give a shit. <laughs> <laughs> and the 10th one was Elizabeth Warren, so there you go. <laughs> but that doesn't stop celebrities from groveling when they get caught playing dress up on Halloween. Here's Hillary Duff last year. Ah! And then, of course, her tweet, I'm so sorry to people I offended. It was not properly thought through, and I am truly from the bottom of my heart sorry. <laughs> Chris Hemsworth was even more beside himself with self-loathing after he attended a Lone Ranger-themed party dressed as an Indian. <gasps> he wrote, I was stupidly unaware of the offense. I sincerely and unreservedly apologize to all First Nations people for this thoughtless action. I hope that in highlighting my own ignorance, I can help in some small way. Oh, for fuck's sake, you're Thor. Grow a pair. <laughs> <laughs>
Last year, Justin Timberlake tweeted that an African-American, Jesse Williams, inspired him and again had to apologize for the sin of giving someone a compliment. I apologize to anyone that felt that was out of turn. I have nothing but love for all of you and all of us. <laughs> oh, good. At the Golden Globes this month, Michael Keaton mixed up the titles of two movies that had a black cast, Hidden Figures and Fences, and said, Hidden Fences, <laughs> because he's a Klansman. Cue the outrage, cue the retraction. I screwed up. It makes me feel so badly that people feel badly. <laughs> if someone feels badly, that's all that matters. No, that's not all that matters. In fact, things like this don't matter at all. Things like this don't matter at all.